Hi, we want to try to set up a program that will simulate the playing of games in the NCAA tournament with a Monte Carlo method. And we're doing this on the TI Inspire. I previously did it on the 8384, but now I've adapted it to the TI Inspire. And what is a Monte Carlo method? Well, it's a simulation based on a random number generator. And we have a probability model that we'll use along with this to try to figure things out. So I'm going to the end first. This is the program, and I'm definitely going to show you how to do this. But I thought you might want to take a look at some of the things that are going on there. Some of you have programming experience. Maybe you can figure some of it out. But I will walk you through the steps for this in a minute. So first of all, I want to show you or explain the uh, probability model and how I try to compare two seeds. Now, if you're familiar with the NCAA tournament, you have seeded teams playing against each other. So, for instance, in the first round, you have a number one seed playing a 16 seed. You have an eight seed playing a nine seed and so on. What happens then is if you take those seeds, if they're very close together, they're going to have an equal or similar probability of winning that game. If you take two that are very separate, for instance, in this case, we have a one seed versus a 16 seed, the one seed will have a much higher chance of winning and beating the 16 seed. So what this model does is it takes these two numbers, the one and the 16, and adds them together. That will give us our denominator of the probability model. And then we reverse the numerators based on the seed number. So the number one seed gets 16 in the numerator, so it's a 16 out of 17 chance of winning. The number 16 seed takes the number 1 in the numerator and then the sum of the 2 in the denominator, and that will have that probability of winning. So, for instance, if I do a 2 seed and a 3 seed, well, the 2 is going to have a 3 out of 5 chance. I take the 2 and 3, add it together, I get the 5. And then the 2 will take on the 3 number for the numerator, and then the 3 will take on the 2 in the numerator. So that's the basic model that we do have. So to get programming or to start programming, we want to get a calculator page open. And so what we want to do is in our documents, start a calculator page. And from that, we go to menu 9 and then 1 and then new. So let's see how this is done. I have a calculator page already opened here. Then I go to menu and I go to number 9, program editor, and I want to do new. Now we've got to put a name in here. It has to be, have no spaces, so I'm just going to call it Final Four. And library access, I'm not sure about this, but I usually do public. I don't know. It will show my catalog. I'm not sure. We'll find out that later. And then we go, okay, so here's the setup for my program. And then here's the start of the program, and here's the end of the program. Here's the name. And so now I want to put in all the details that I can as I go along. Some of the things you need to know about programming, well, and some of it's unique to the TI Inspire, but first of all, you need to localize your variables. And I'll show you how to do this. And that keeps them unique in your program so you're not sharing variables with another program. Then you want to initialize your variables to make sure that there isn't junk in there that will mess up your program. This is very conventional in all programming languages. And then we need to set up an if-then-else that will tell us in, uh, if we're going to have a winner and who is the winner as we go along. So let's localize our variable. So I'm going to put local first. Now if you notice, local is a command, so then the letters turned out normal. And then if I type in any other word after this, that's a variable. This is like a letter X, so we can store something in there. To me, that's going to be the seed number of the first team listed in my bracket. And then so I need both teams, and so what's the second one I'm going to call? Or what I'm going to call the second one? It's going to be second. So I localize both of those. Then we initialize them. So I put a zero, and I'm going to store. Now the store button's right above the variable, so i got to go blue control variable, and that will give me my arrow. And I'm going to put zero into the first variable. And also I'm going to put zero into the second variable. This is called initializing, which I mentioned before, and it just makes sure that those two variables here, first and second, are clear, or I put zeros in them. Okay, then I need another variable, which is called local, and the, uh, I'm sorry, it's called rand. 
And I can't use RAND because that's a command, so I'm going to call it RND. So this is another variable that will be a, a random number. And so I'm going to use the random number function, which some of you have used before. And I'm going to store a random number into RAND. Now I could have used X, Y, and Z, but I didn't want to conflict with other things. The, the programming guy told me to use different names if I could. Now <clears throat> with this one, this RAND will generate a number between 0 and 1. That will, div that will give me my probability model. And so then I use that RAN to compare it to the system that I've set up in the probability model that I'm setting up. So what I want to do next is I want to set up an if-then statement. To do this, if, and it turns straight up, I'm going to take the RND, not the RAND, but RND, that's the variable that I defined right here, and I'm going to compare it to my second variable, and I'm going to divide it by the sum of the first plus the second. And so what does this do? Well, what this does for me is that this takes the second number. So for instance, it was 1 versus 16. This takes the 16 and divide it by 17, 16 plus 1. And if my random number is less than that, then that means that that's going to trigger a win for the one seed. And so that's what's happening. And maybe I can explain a little bit more later. And you can move this over so you can see this a little bit better too. So I do an if and then I put a then. And I put a space and I capitalize the then. That's what it looks like for convention. So what I want to do then is that if this is true, if the random number is less than the second divided by the first and the second, remember that the first took the second, second seed's number. So this means that I'm going to display that the first team is going to win. So I'm going to say the first seeded team. And I'm going to put wins, but I, I want to put the number in here too. So I couldn't get this all on one. I, don't, I didn't know how to do the variable part with this. So I'm going to do another display. And I'm going to put the number. So what this will do is that if the first team wins, it's going to say first seeded team. And if it was the number one seed, I'd put a one here. And then I'm going to put a comma. And then in quotations, it will print out the wins. So it will print out whatever seed it is. And I guess you can only see when we run the program. Okay, so that's what it will do if this is true. What happens if it's false? Well, if the first seeded team doesn't win, we do an else. And so this is if this statement is false, I go and apply the else part down here. Now the else part is going to display not the first seeded team, but the second seeded team. And with this, I do the same thing. So I paused and I typed in this line here. Okay, you might have to pause to figure that one out. And then what we have with this if then else statement, we have to end the if. We have to end this if then statement. And so you just use the command end if. So it starts here. And what you can do here too, which is nice, is to take these displays that are in there and the else and put a little space. Because that means that this if then else all the way down to here is just one statement but it has the first part and second part and so on. So if this is true, then it's going to execute this statement right here. First seeded team wins. If this thing is false, in other words, that I get like six, uh, over 16 out of 17, then that's going to say the second seeded team wins. And that's about it. Okay, we can make this a little bit more fancy and I'm going to show you how to do that. But first of all, if I have my uh, program done. I want to check syntax and store. And then it says stored successfully. So probably you're okay with your syntax. You didn't do any obvious errors. Now you just have to see if it runs. So I can slip this back over here and you can type in this name final four. Now there's a catch. You got to put in an open parentheses, close parentheses to run this. So with this I 
press enter. And I got an error, so I got a problem solve. So in my practice, before I did this, I did the same exact error, so I know what the error is. But it's a good way to show you, if you do make an error, to go back and you can fix things. But you will have to do that other thing again. What I did not do ever is that I didn't put a spot to put in the uh, what the first and second are. So what I have to do is the input function for the TI Inspire is request. So after I have this zero stored into second, I have to use the command request. And what do I want to request? Well, I want to request that we take, I need a variable for this first team. So I do the first team seed. And now this will end with italics. And then I'm going to put a comma. And then it will wait for you to enter this in. And what will, it, what will you enter in? Well, you're, you'll enter in the variable that's called first. So this is where the computer or the program gets its information. And so I'm going to do this again. And I'm going to request second team seed. Put uh, end of quotes. Oh, it might already be there. Yep, I don't want to do double. And so I got to go inside to take that out. Otherwise, it kind of messes up. And then I'm going to go second. And so that will put it into the second variable. Now, I think I did this right. I think I got everything. And what happens now is that you can check it again. And do you notice before that it did say that my syntax and everything was okay, but I made it a big error. So when I ran it, it was a problem. So yes, I made an error, which isn't great to show you, but I think it is great to show you because if you make an error, then maybe you can problem solve and go through it. Okay, so here's my program now. You can double check what I have against what you have and see if it is there. Now, I still haven't run this, so I still need to go ahead and run this. And a good suggestion too is to take this and copy it because sometimes you'll burp yourself out of the program and you want to get back into it and so you can get into it easy. So I just did control copy and that's my program. So if I do enter, oh there it works, good. Well let's see if it seems to work. So the first team seed I'm going to plug in 0, I'm going to plug in 16 to test and usually this should say first seeded team number one wins. So this is what I entered in Oh, I'm sorry, this is what the program asked me for. Then I entered in one, and that's stored in the first, the variable that's called first. Then it asked me second team seed, and this is 16, which I put into the second. And then it says the first seeded team, it did the calculation with the random number generator, and it says the first seeded team wins. So what I can do now is that as long as I hit enter, I can try this again. And if I do this, the one seed should win most of the time. Okay, hit enter. Now I could do this a long time, but I got to make sure that the second team wins. So maybe I do uh, three versus five. And all I'm doing is doing enter there. Okay, so here's the first team seed. I have to make sure that the second team seed wins. So I'm going to try it one more time. Three. Five, and I'm going to pause this until I get one. So there's one. Uh, the first team seed is three, second team seed is five, and so the second seeded team does win. I was running this earlier when I was just started with this, and it always had the second team always winning, no matter what seeds I put in there. So I tried to problem solve it a little bit and sort it out and fix it until I could get it to work. All right. So this is what happens. Now, what you might do sometimes, sometimes you'll put a five here. If you do that, that's okay. Just delete it and press enter. And then you should be able to get back to what we have here. Now, if you hit three and then enter, now you're out of the program. So what you have to do is you have to go and type in final four again, or if you copied it earlier, it will save you some time by just pasting, and then you gotta get in there again. And then you can go one versus 16 or whatever your game is playing on your sheet. So what you do now is you take this program and you bring it to your sheet and wherever it says, for instance, the first one is one versus 16. You type in one versus 16, you write down what the program gives you. If the 16th seed wins, 
you got to go with it. You can't redo. There's no redos. And so what you want to do is fill out your bracket, and then you're going to go ahead and I gave you a, uh, I'll give you a sheet in class to tell you where to enter this in. Usually I use CBS Sports, but uh, sometimes we're blocked on that. So we'll see how that works. All right, I think this helps you with the program, and I hope this wasn't too long. But I, I think that you'll have fun programming, even though you're copying me. It's nice to see how the program works and how we're started with it. All right, thank you very much, and enjoy the final four. Woohoo!